Hey guys, what's going on? This is David Avalon, and I'm reviewing a match I had with Marcio Boca Oliveira from, I think, in 2003 in Grapplers Quest West. This was a Pro Division Finals. Uh, Boca at the time was known for having a very good half guard, and you can see he pulled right into it. I was known for being a wrestler, so they didn't want to mess around with the, the wrestling game. And... Uh, you can see here I'm already getting in some trouble there as he's trying to work his deep half and get around my leg. I'm trying to stay tight with him, which is not a good move in the beginning because you can see he's digging those underhooks, gets deep on the half guard, and now I'm bouncing to try to shift my weight. He circles, tries to get behind me, and then we end up going out of bounds. Let's look at that again. Look at the instant replay here. He's digging in for underhooks. He already has the left. He Now look, he gets the right underhook, and he's pulling himself in. And as I posture, now that gives him space to get deep. You see he has his head on my hip. Uh, at this point now, uh, I'm trying to shift my weight, get on my feet. That way I have a little bit more dexterity. But in doing so, now I've opened up space for him. And you can see how he's done a good job of capturing my ankle with his half guard. And now he starts climbing up the tree, trying to get to a single leg, but I'm able to start escaping and clear. At this point, now he's rushing behind me. I really have nowhere else to go but out of bounds as I fled uh, that back take. So we restart in the middle. And uh, again, doing some hand fighting here. Uh, like I told you, American Top Team had just recently formed there. And we could see right there. He made a mistake when he pulled guard and he didn't establish those underhooks. So you can notice that I got the under, underhooks very deep in. I got the cross face. I adjusted my grip so I can get tighter. Notice how he's trying to frame, which is the right thing. But I'm keeping my chin down real low. So at this point, he's purely defensive here. And I could be doing a better job with this squeeze, particularly more shoulder pressure. You can see I'm on my knees. So that means a lot of my weight's on my legs instead of on his face. When you do this, normally you want all that weight with like what would be my left shoulder digging into his chin. So he's not as uncomfortable as he should be. Anyhow, I'm trying to, you see, use my, my foot there to open up his half guard to knee cut. But he's doing a good job of replacing and keeping in the half guard. Now I make a mistake here and I let go of that uh, cross face and try to dig for the Kimura here. But that gives him the space to break free. And now we're back in the half guard. Now, I made some adjustments here. You can see I'm doing a better job of digging underhooks and particularly keeping my head lower. If I have my head at the same level as his or I have the top of my head under his chin, it's going to be very difficult for him to pass. I mean, to get a, a deep half guard or sweep position. Right now, not a good position. Now my head's over his back. He, if he's able to shift my weight a little bit, he can get under me. Uh... But now you notice I, I frame, make some adjustments, and notice how I'm using my head to try to block him. And now I've created some space here. But look what he's doing. He squares up. Now he's playing an open guard here and controlling my head. Now in my mind, what I'm trying to do is circle to the other side. Because you can see he's predominantly focusing on staying on his right side. Because most half guard players are specialized on one particular side. So my goal is to try to circle towards my right, your left, so that I can make him defend on the side that he's not familiar with. But you can notice he has his foot defending the hip, so I can't really circle easily. And now he's trying to dig for a Kimura, but no shoulder control, so I'm able to clear it pretty easily here. And now I got some wrist control, and look where my head is, under his chin. And I have the under position, so very hard for him to work anything here. Uh, still nothing quite going on. Look how I'm trying to circle. <laughs> it looks like I slipped, so I didn't complete that circle. But uh, we're pretty much getting into the same position every time where I'm trying to circle. He's trying to stay on that same side, uh, but nothing quite going on for either of us at this point here. But now I'm on my feet again. And if you notice, I'm going to keep circling to that side. And right here, good knee cut attempt, but I didn't have the underhook, and then he framed away. So let's look at that again. Right here, you're going to notice I'm on my knees, and I'm going to make a transition to square up, get on my feet, circling towards my right. And you can see I have the left underhook, so now I'm in a good position to knee cut. But I lost the underhook in the repummel, and that's what allowed him to escape. You can see he uses that underhook to throw me off to the side, and then in the scramble, we square back up again. So now we're back in Boca's half guard. 
I'm keeping good head positioning, staying low. Uh, this is not going to give him much to work with here because there's nothing he can really grab onto. Because I'm, and he also knows my hips are really far away. And now you notice I'm doing a little something different. I'm using my right hand to throw, sort of throw a half Nelson. Is that under his leg, his top leg, and over his bottom leg? This prevents the motion of his bottom leg a little bit and kind of puts some weight on that bottom leg, which allows me then to get into the stack position. Got the double stack, trying to lift up his hips and put weight over his legs here. And a good double stack, well, in this case, he bailed out, gave his back, and uh, that scored me an advantage. So let's look at that again. So if you take a look here, I have that half Nelson, and look, I'm putting weight on both his legs, and I clear them. So now he has to go and pass his legs over, but by going over, now he gives me the double under position, or the double stack. Now he's doing a good job. Notice he's trying to stay flat, and look how he scoots back so he can keep his hips down. And I'm trying to lift his hips up, but I, I'm not using a good grip. Normally you want to body lock here or, or wrap around the waist, but eventually I got there. And what really cements the position here is notice how I'm using my chest to put weight over his knees. That keeps his hips from coming back. Also, my right knee is behind his hips, so now they can't drop back anymore. They're supported. And what I need to do is put more weight on them. But you can notice he turns over to avoid the pass and gives me the back. Uh, now, this is not two points, but it is an advantage, which is the only score so far in this match, giving me the lead. So now I have his back here, no hooks. I have an advantage, but again, not a, a huge winning margin. I should be looking to advance my position here, but I'm somewhat tentative on, on the attack. I'm probably giving him a little too much respect because there looks to be a lot of space to get hooks in, particularly on that right side. It's a big opening to get at least one hook. But uh, I think I was looking to try to score a side control or something off the recovery. And you could see that I gave him too much space and he was able to recover his guard. And now he works up to his feet. I think at this point, he's down an advantage and he hasn't had any luck on his back. So he's going to try to wrestle with me and see if he can score a takedown. And uh, right here, he knows I create a lot of space. Shoot a nice hand side single leg, get up to my feet. And now I'm trying to chase him as he's turning away and running, doing a good job following. Now I try to slam him, but then he breaks free and escapes. So let's look at that one more time. So you can see here in the replay, I'm backing up, and that was an attempt to pull him in. And notice when he reaches, I drag the arm over, shoot a head inside single leg. All right, and now I'm deep on a head inside single leg, and I circle with it. It's like a sweep single. So the sprawl didn't affect me. I get my head up now because my head initially was low and now I start trying to drive into him and he's running away from me here doing a good job of controlling the underhook and the ankle here as he's trying to flee and escape. Um, at this point here I get a little antsy and rather than just I could have easily foot swept him here because he's jumping but instead I tried to slam him and that was a mistake because this, usually when you slam people you create space with all the movement and this allowed him to escape. I should have foot swept would have scored an easy two. So we start back in the middle. Now, at this point, he's felt that he's given up another advantage for that close single leg attempt. So he's down two advantages to none. Uh, and there's about a minute and 10 seconds left in the match. So at this point, he should be in desperation mode and should be working hard to score submissions, take down sweeps, whatever he can. But uh, you can see he's asking for the time. Uh, you gotta be careful of going too gun ho early and then blowing your all of your energy too soon. But at the same time, you can't be so conservative here. Like we're kind of resting, you know. Like as me, my coaches are telling me stay smart, uh, good positioning, which are code words for stall, <laughs> right? So you can't let the top guy stall you out, you know. If you're the bottom guy, he's gotta be a little more aggressive. And right now, he's trying to work a uh, like an arm drag elevator there. But that's not going to fly. And uh, I'm able to base out of that. And now we're back in the half guard. You see he's not being, uh, for my taste, not being active enough. Like the pressure is on him. He's got to work much harder to try to even up this match. Or at the very least uh, try to win this match. Uh, I'm not doing much here. I'm just staying, like, listening to instructions, staying smart. Right now, um, and when he goes into close guard, this is even worse. Like, you don't want to be in a close guard on bottom with somebody when you're losing. 
It's very easy to read your movements, especially when you're like this, where I have control of both his biceps and my head's in his chest. He can't really do much without me knowing it. So you're not going to surprise anybody here. Now he opens up his guard, and uh, this creates opportunities. Look at me. I'm trying to, again, circle to my right, try to look for a knee cut and pass. And now he throws a omoplata, uh, but not deep enough to make anything happen. Now he inverts, trying to find something on the way out there. I'm like trying to pass there. Uh, he's being active now, and this is a good time to get active. Now uh, he looked like he was going to stand up. He didn't. Now he stands up. I'm on a single leg. Look at him. Kimura trap, uh, but didn't go through. And that's the end of the match there. But let's look at that final sequence. So this final sequence here, it's like a few seconds left. He needs to make something happen. So what is he doing? He's pushing me away, and he's going to try to make space to stand up which he does successfully. This is a good move on his part. Standing up creates scrambles, and you need scrambles to make you know an opportunity happen. I'm on a head and side single leg. Now look, he starts attacking that far arm for head and side single Kimura trap, but when he goes down, he doesn't have enough pressure on my shoulder. You see how his elbow slipped away? That meant there was no leverage to attack the arm, which made it easy for me to escape and uh, get on top. And that concludes the match. I ended up winning two advantages to none. I hope you guys learned some strategic concepts here on how to attack a good deep half guard player. Notice how I use head positioning, keeping my hips back. And for the passing, I was working to pass on the opposite side as most half guard players focus on one side. So if you can get them on the other side, they're usually not as good as defending. Thank you for watching and take care. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be alerted when the next video drops. Now, if you want to get more videos like this on a daily basis, go and visit my membership site at ffacoach.com. We have online video curriculums, our daily videos, and you can get bonus courses like the Kimura Trap System for free when you enroll today. So go ahead and help support the channel and visit today.